If you're excited to see White Yardy tonight, make some noise. Please welcome to the stage your host for the evening from the Entertainment Report podcast. We're getting ready to start an interview like no other. Give a nice warm welcome to my brother, Entertainment Report podcast, Muscle! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you guys doing today? You guys all right? You guys are looking forward to a special show tonight, right? This is called Off The Record, so we've never done a show like this. So then what you're gonna get is half an hour, an interview podcast style where we're gonna really learn who White Yardy is, and then after that, you guys are gonna get a chance to ask some questions yourself, right? You guys cool with that? You guys good with that, right? You guys really want to find out what makes White Yardy tick. What made him who he is today, right? We're going to discover that today. I see my good friend Tony in the crowd, bigger up. My wife Kelly, she's here. Brother Wes, she's here. So then now, with no further ado, we're looking for Mr. White Yardy to enter the stage right now so we can start this conversation and get it going on. So Mr. White Yardy, can you please step right up? Give him a big round of applause right now. Mr. White Yardy. The only thing I'm going to ask you to watch the white carpet. Check. How are you going? You good? Excited. Full of energy. You drink water already, brother? Of course, you got to keep hydrated. I want to intro you doing your throat dry? Of course. All right. All right, so let's get the show on the road. As I said, my yeah. name is Muscle from the Entertainment Report podcast, and then today we're going to really get to find out who my good friend, who I, who I already is, all right? You're nervous. Very. 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 Yo, I'm going to get trouble in an office with me, you know, like, I know I'm nervous, right? You know. First question for you. So quick? So quick. It's a special show. Yeah. So basically, you know, you, nobody else not get this on the tour. That's why it's a special show. You get to hear some questions. Who's been to any other shows on the tour yet? Yeah. Just three, four, I know. That means we can't do some old shit tonight, then. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on, go on. Where did you grow up in Jamaica? And what type of child were you back then? A two question, now one, not you know. Of course it is. St. Elizabeth, Black River. Oh, St. Elizabeth in the building? Okay. St. Lisbeth, Black River. What kind of child was I? I was... Bad breed. No, 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 no. I don't like the word bad breed. Because yeah. that means that your family is never good. Mm. I would say I was a very... Not troublesome. <laughs> 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 Stop giving me name, no man. Oh, Let me get name. Let me give myself oh, a name. Not out of order. Fast, inquisitive, yeah. Very mischievous. Bright and fierce is a good one too. And out of order. Not out of order. Out of order. No, it's in order. When you're out of order, that means you're not work again. <laughs> out of order. So I was in order. But I was, I was very, I, I, you know, I, I was good and I mix a board. Like you was a ch- when you're a child, you're a child. You know what every child does. You know what I mean? You, you, you see how far you can push people, till, like adults, until you get beaten. So, and then when you get the beaten, you know, all right, I can do that again and make you know. So, yeah. Like, I, I was one of them children where, like, even in school, I, I didn't finish high school. You know? Okay. I didn't finish high school. We're going to get there just now. Okay, I never know if it's a question, so I don't know why you skip past that. Cause that Many people don't know that, so all right. So yeah, I didn't finish high school. What did you think you were gonna get into? Now coming from a place like St. Elizabeth, Black River, what did you wanna get into? A pilot, a doctor, a lawyer? What did you think you were gonna get into? You know how crazy this is? Real thought, this is not in my life. What I wanted to be growing up was a chef on a cruise ship. Why? Because I did love food. We just love from a little and I grow up. I just experiment in the kitchen more time. Yo, remember one day, I go in the kitchen and need some flour, get bully beef, corn beef, corn beef, and, and make the corn beef and, and make some dumpling and put the, but I never make the normal fried dumpling. I kind of shape them like some little 
bowl and then we put in the the um the corned beef in it with it was well seasoned up and bring go give my mother in the morning for breakfast. She's like, oh, this is nice. She bite it and say, but the flour not cooked yet. <laughs> so yeah, but I did I did want to be a chef. I did. When did that's that, crazy. Never even did remember that. Yes. Yeah. When did that actually change in your mind where you said, okay, I'm not gonna really be a chef. I'm gonna go into a different direction. When she bite the flour and he never cook. <laughs> No, you, you know, you know when, like, it's just over time, you kind of, you're young, so that's what you want to do when you're young. But realistically, once you get older, other things come into play, you don't really focus upon that as much no more. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I never really did. I start getting to music more. Because my father did have a sound system. Dan but, Bob. Dan, yeah, him named Bob, sound named Dan Pelico. Yeah, my big sound from St. Elizabeth. And I started from a young age learning how to mix and, and talk on the microphone and introduce songs. So me used to stand up on like red stripe boxes, not even create boxes, old school, you get me? And stand up so I can see the turntable and I learn. So music kind of take over the passion or after that. When they want to be like that, a DJ and things like that. Was there any other big selectors, artists or anything in the area that you're looking up to? Or were you just basically fooling around with the music at that time there? Not really, because St. Elizabeth at the time, we never really have like anybody like big like that. To be honest, my father's song at that time was probably the most popular song because we, we literally we kill every song in the area. Okay. Yeah, we did have a DJ. We did have a DJ named Bones. Bones, yes, I know. Yeah, Bones, Bones and he come from. Um, he didn't even come from St. Elizabeth, you know, and he came there, but him wicked, bad. We all take his sound and go in our own area of a killer sound too. So yeah, him did bad and we have germs as well. Bones and germs. Yeah. Crazy nails though. Right there. Question. This is, this is a bit more when you discovered something yourself. You're growing up in St. Elizabeth. Everybody's around. You know Jamaica's a different place where they don't partial. They're going to just call you what they call you. When did you discover that you were different than everybody else in the area? When did you discover that you were white? and most other people around you were black? No, seriously speaking. No, this is a real serious question. When it's did a you serious discover quest- it? It is a serious question, but guess what? You know why? Yeah? If you grew up in Jamaica, you realize you're just one. Nobody, no, no, nobody never treat me different in Jamaica. Not once. Not, like them give you a nickname. Don't get me wrong, you get nicknames, but that's just standard. Like, you know, we used to have a nickname called White Mice. Red rat. <laughs> yeah, white mice and red rat, they used to call me. Which is what it is. We, I had friends in class. I had, I, had, I had three different friends where one was called Blacks, one called Black Man, and one called Black Socks. <laughs> it, it just is what it is. We don't really like, like, I always tell people I never really knew about racism until I left Jamaica. I didn't know about it, because we're all one people. Got you. You're talking about high school now, all right? What were you like in high school? Because you say you didn't finish. So then this is where clearly things start to get interesting in your life now. What were you like in high school? High school. You know, it's the problem with high school. May I tell you exactly what the problem is? You see, when we live at Jamaica, right? When we used to live at Black River, Korean Road. On that road, yeah, there was a lot of other like boys on that road. There's enough of us. We used to play football in the evening. So I grew up on that lane and I know on that road and I know all of them. So when I went to high school, I'm there with guys in like grade 10 and grade 11 that I know from my era. So it's almost like even though I'm new to the school, I'm kind of with them on the freedom wing. And it was wrong because them soon left. I mean, just follow them out of foolishness. Yeah, so me, me getting enough trouble. Whole heap of trouble, as a matter of fact. Me, like, high school was crazy for me. I get beaten till I get tired of it. Till them. You know, in the beating, you can't even feel it no more. Yeah. You just cry for them, stop. Stop beating me now, stop. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, didn't, I didn't finish high school. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't I, I, there was a stage in my life where 
where my mother and my father, obviously they weren't together. They, they left a long time. They left from when I was young. They broke up when I was very young. So I used to live between my mother and my father, depending on which one me I get more trouble at my guy in next house. <laughs> or whoever I will beat me, my guy in next house, I'm gonna get beaten. <laughs> and <laughs> that was the truth. So so at the time my mother did wasn't living in Jamaica at the time, she did left for work reasons. And my father was a bit more lenient. My father wasn't as strict as my mother. And my stepmother was more strict than my father. To be honest, my stepmother gave me a whole heap of beating. You remember one time police called the house. <laughs> and she said, put him on the phone. You really make police call the house? Better them keep it then come I'll kill you when you reach. I said, officer, don't send me back. Don't send me back. <laughs> but there was a stage where I was hiding from school quite a lot. I was hiding from school quite a lot. There was a, there was a stage where I weren't, I, was, I, I get ready for go school. I get dressed, put on my school uniform, but I never go to school. What I go somewhere else, go hang out. Would you out. go run a boat, or what would you be doing at that time there since you right, like so to... So, as I said, like I said, the, the guys from the area were older than me, and from my young, I always have friends who are older than me. Like, people around my age, I never really get along with them. I don't know why, but I, and I don't know if it's because with the sound system, I was around it, so I was exposed to certain things at a certain age, where young, you don't really expose to certain things. Maybe that was a case. But me used to hang around with mostly older, the older guys in the area, the older band them. So when, when them leave school, some of them go off and do their own thing. And we had a friend where he used to sell CD and cassettes. So him had him, if anybody been to the Caribbean or Jamaica, you know the guys that used to sell CD and cassette, them have a, a big speaker, them have them, and them play music all day long, them sell your CDs and all different mix and all these things. So during the daytime, we used to go there, so, and just hang out, out just hang out. And then until my father realized that, that me I do, and he came go straight to school, go sit me down in front of the principal. And the principal said, the more to lesson this boy miss, he must forgot to repeat year nine. I said, what? <laughs> Bad man, I'm not there on that. So, so I repeated year nine. I repeated year nine. And when we come out, hey, let me tell you something. My father not easy, you know. When we come out of the principal office, you know, my father never beat me. He looked at me and said, so you're going to repeat year nine. You hear that? And I said, yeah. Remember, you do half white already, you know. I said, what that mean? So you better get full A. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. And, then, and then I went on to year 10, and things went left after this one. I never go back to school for a while. And too many parents never did it still. I'm not going to lie. They never, I never have no real. I did this one, I did out of order and unruly them time there. Yeah, I did bad them time. Them time, they were bad. Because my mother there are foreign at work. My father, him cut gone and foreign and go back and forth. I never even live with my parents now. I live with people where we work on the sound. So now I become a full time sound man. I see my friend and I go to school every morning. I nah, go, I say, man, enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, man, so. Because I seen you post a picture, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, yeah. where you were in your school uniform. But the trick with it, you were off to the corner, but you had your gun finger while you're posing in the school u <laughs> uniform. <laughs> You think I didn't catch that, right? Yo, uh, the, that was when I repeated year nine. Yeah. That's not even my first nine grade. That's the one I repeated because you can't even see me stand up to the side. Them never even know me. <laughs> <laughs> They're not used to me. Yeah. They might see me in the school, but me, the man think to myself, where am I coming out of class? Come to them. That's why I'm there to the side to myself. But I want distance because I want to pose. So that's why I'm... And show the gun finger. I never, Can't I, leave that up. No, I just my hand set a certain way from a little. I, don't, I look, see it? If it's anybody in here follows White Yardy, check his page when we leave and tell him that you've seen the gun finger. You don't have to believe me, the gun finger. I lie you tell. Okay. <laughs> check his page, W E R D, on Instagram, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> I know that at 18, you had migrated to the UK. Yeah. Why did you migrate to UK at 18? And what was it? Was it a culture shock moving from Jamaica to the UK at that time in your life? So moving to the UK was basically after a while. 
living like my father, as I said, man, never really I live with no parents. So and where I come from in, in Jamaica, Black River, them call it the ghost town. Because really and truly, after seven or six thirty, yo, if you don't catch a taxi home, you walk home, you know. Everywhere lock off. So most of my friends them did move away. Some of them fly come Canada. America. Can I even pan the tour my book up and some of my school friends them, you know. Okay. I saw me get that picture there, you know, one of my school friends them send me the picture yeah. what day after the Hamilton show him say, yo, brother, you remember me? I said, oh, book lad, dog. Remember you look the same. Yeah. You know, change you just grow taller, but me never move from my height, but you grow taller. <laughs> and, and, and you know, like meet so many in England. So it was like everybody I leave and you just feel like who they are with you now. So then, you know, like, them time my father, they are England, say, yo, daddy, I want to come to England for a little bit and see what I go on. You get me? So, I ask him and he, he, he send for me and I go over. And then when I go over, they know, it's, it's not even say a culture shock because I just did excited. I got foreign, I just happy for see things. All I see care, I'm just happy for see care. I think I see him fucking care with their Jamaica. I just care. <laughs> but for some reason, he's just happy. Every day, I pray for snow. I say, yo, I want to see snow. I want to see snow. And I never see no snow. And now, when I see snow, I say, I don't want to see no more snow. You know, when you're tired, of, you're tired right now. You know, when, when Jamaicans come to England or, or Canada and they see snow, if you first time, they run, go out there and grab it up. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> After a year of that shit, you're tired of that fucker, man. <laughs> you don't want to hear, you want to hear the artist when he snow no more, he hates snow. <laughs> so I was just excited to be in a different place and see what's going on. And you know, and again, because my father, he was still surrounded by a lot of Jamaicans, he didn't feel like we did too far from home because we still hung around with Jamaicans, you get me? So, yeah. So did you start to work at this time here? Because now you're an adult. Did you go back to school? What was your next move when you got to the UK now to really assimilate with what's going on in that country there? Boy, you want to move and say, you know, things and things go on, and, you know. You know what I mean? My father was a, was a, I get to learn why my father used to go to England so much and what kind of line of work he was in. He was what they call a um, street pharmacist. Yes. <laughs> Told you guys, you guys were going to learn some stuff tonight. Yeah, I mean, because my father was a street pharmacist, you know, automatically, my kind of follow suit, you know what I mean? And yeah, kind of went down a road of a lifestyle involving gangs and drugs and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So I was heavily involved in certain illegal activities. And how did that shape your future? When you're in the UK, was it something where you had to move very quickly? You had to learn the road very quickly. Where did that put you? Your mind state at that time there. You know, you're like you're young, so sometimes you have to do things and you not think about the consequences. Mm -hmm. So at the time, I wasn't really thinking about the consequences of what, like you can, you know what I mean? Because I, I I didn't grow up in in England, and true me, I come from Jamaica where police walk with gun, and when we got England, police walk with whistle and button. No, like, which one more scary, you know what I mean? Stop! <laughs> Shut up, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, I didn't really think about the consequences at the time, but I, I don't regret anything that has happened in my life because at the same time, the people that I was around, the, the people who I was around in England around that time are very well respected that even to this day, even if somebody has an issue or don't like me a certain way, them tread careful with all them speak. So it's not a bad thing, but I don't like having that, I don't like having that persona or that people to have that, that mindset of me to know, say, yo, don't ramp with him because X, Y, Z. But sometimes it's good to make people know because people won't take every idiot to you, get me? So sometimes it's, it's like if you have a bigger cousin where a bad man, even though you are not the bad man, it, people not go ramp with you because they're afraid of your cousin type of situation, you know what I mean? So yeah, so I don't mind. What would you say was one of the scariest moments when you were on the road, where something where you thought like, you know what, this might really be it. One really scary moment while you're on the road. Whoa. Um, one time, one time I, 
I remember doing, just started to do comedy. Just started to do comedy. And I was still hustling on the side. Still hustling. And I remember one time, police them jump out, run in our car, two away in the car, lick out the window. I mean, even understand why a man lick out the window for. I could have just opened the door. I you know, so asked him afterwards, after I said, big man, why you mash the car with it? And you mash the back window too, you just get excited. Nobody knew in the back. <laughs> just come out and go on like you yeah, do something. Psh. What the fuck, man? So um, that situation there, but luckily enough, everything was cool. We, we, we managed to get, well, there was nothing to, to put us in jail for. So, but it was an eye opener to know, so yo, like even my partner at the time was like, yo, this have to stop. Pick one. So that was, I, it's more my partner made me open up my eye to it to say, yo, time for stop. Yeah. I'm decide, say, yo, from that time, comedy, full time, I'm not hand clean. I'm go straight pan in the rank. I have children, so I want to set a good example for them. Mm -hmm. My son I reach an age where it's like, sooner or later, he might want to know what daddy does. When I go tell him, say, oh, i soon come, I got to work, but what do you do? Mm -hmm. I ask too much questions. Eventually, I'm going to know. <laughs> And my father used to do it, me come do it. No, him have to break, me have to break the cycle. Yeah. Cause if me carry on do it, him will go on and do it. Yeah. True. How did you even discover comedy now? Because comedy is something where usually you hear the class clown, you're the one making all the jokes and all that. Were you that type of person or where do you really discover this thing to really save you from the streets? You know, say in general, Jamaican's funny. Like, when you think about it you now, we're funny, you know, like, when we're in a school you now, when we're a talk and a bus joke, you know, we're funny, but it's not everybody can take the funny to the stage. It's a bit of a difference. There's a funny in your friends, and there's a funny on the stage. So comedy just accidentally happened to me by posting videos on people like when me rant about things. So like, I think one of my first rants, my first ever rant that I did, Someone who might not even know it, some might have seen it. But it was about, like, I dropped my son, and it was a real rant, it wasn't even a joke rant. Mm -hmm. I dropped my son to school, and the teacher come up to me, if he speak to me about something, and the first thing the teacher said was, good morning, but the breath wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, I think to myself, how you just wake up and your breath smells already? <laughs> like, you, you really left, come at work, for come talk. don't talk to my son today, don't talk to him. <laughs> I mean, I think to myself, like, people who smoke and drink coffee, that's the worst combination. If you smoke and drink coffee in the morning, you need to walk with Listerine, you need to walk with toothpaste, toothbrush, you need to, no, you, as soon as you finish smoke and drink, you need to wash out, though. You can't come tell, talk to people, for, and when I notice it, people is thinking, but talk the most. In your face. They, and they want to come up. We always want to whisper. Don't whisper. <laughs> Some people break stink. Them send you all a voice note. You smell it. Just fuck this shit. Fuck that shit. Delete your number. Block. Yeah, the worst one is when you give them a hint. You know you ever, you ever drive with somebody in a car and them breath a stink? And you say, Yo, you want a mint? You want a mint? No, no, I'm good. No, you're not good. You're not good. You know, it, it window them steam up. Wind down a window, put your, put your head outside like that. <laughs> Hear it out, do a hundred miles. <laughs> Stinking breath people, man. None of your breath smell in here. I can tell by the way you're laughing, it smells beautiful. Like Big roses. You're yeah, too close to them, fair smell roses. Roses. When did you actually know your comedy was working for you? Was there an actual one viral moment? Was it a matter of things started to happen? Where was that one spark where you said, oh, we have something here? You know, it, it was when I started to do my own shows and start waiting for promoters to book me. And when I started doing my own shows and people were turning up, it made me realize, and I took it serious. I didn't want to take it as a joke, like, like, just feel like, oh yeah, you have following people that come see you. Because you, you might have a following, people do come and see you, but if you're not good, they won't come back and see you. Then that's the truth. So I had to make sure I respect and learn the craft of comedy. Not just take it as like, yeah man, just go up on stage and say whatever. No, 
And it's like even people in the beginning to this, like when I just started, there were people, people put six months on my career. Yeah, people say, yo, after six months, people forget about him. Mm -hmm. Him time run out, him done. He's not that funny. Him just have a Jamaican accent. How was that Jamaican accent funny? Do you understand what I mean? It didn't make sense, so it just kept me going after that, man. But it's when people started to come to my shows, my own shows, because promoters already had their list and know how to market. I didn't. I took a chance and used my platform to promote shows, and that's when we realized, all right, there's something here. And we just kept going and kept going and never stopped, so yeah. That's right there, and that's why we're sitting on this stage right here having a conversation. Because of the tenacity, the keep going, the making things happen, you understand? No, definitely. Like, like my motivation, you know, I, I, it's good to have a lot of different motivations because it, it show you there's a lot you're working for, and it'll show you that a lot of support is there. My children motivate me, and I'll tell you why, because as a father, no child in this earth has asked to be here. Two adults make a decision and bring child here. You, that's your responsibility. If you didn't do what you do, they wouldn't be here. So they should not have to suffer because of you not wanting to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. So I push forward every day to make sure that I know my children are good. If me not have nothing, I'm good, long as them have something. Yeah. yeah? The other motivation I have is people. Let me tell you something, man. Like, people share some things with me sometime after shows and even when they just meet me. And there's times when I, I'm, remember I'm a human, you know. I'm a human being. I go through the same things you go through daily. I go through the stress. I go through depression. I suffer from depression. There's times when I want to quit comedy and don't want to do it no more because I cannot see the end goal in this. I feel like, yo, every year me just a repeat, do the same thing. Repeat, do the same thing. When me I reach the next level in my career where me can have a little bit time for just relax. It don't feel like it. It feel like me constantly working, 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 which is not a problem. But at the same time, you see people who come through and they are saying, I think, blood cloud, you reach up this so fast. <laughs> me they are the ones that put in the groundwork and you reach up. You understand? But it is what it is. But people motivate me. Yo, like last night, right here, no word of a lie, there was a lady after the show, she cried to me to tell me about a situation that had been happening to her personally, and it's because of me that got her through. Something not an essential worker, but I want to tell you that you are. You make people laugh, you make people angry. When they are hard, they are and I'm so grateful for you. So I want to tell you that you are the one who should have retake my birthday. You're the reason I came out. I haven't done anything in my years since I lost her, but I'm sorry. That just motivated me to go harder. Because I know that somebody in here or somebody outside, my content helps them in some way. And even like, you know, like I that that to me means so much. So there's times during there's times during lockdown, there's times when I don't even want to post a video. I'm tired, I don't want to do nothing, I just want to put on my phone and chill. But I know somebody out there, it helps them. So me put on a brave face and get up and do it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man. Like that. You just brought up your children. You have your older son and you have your younger daughter. I know you have a joke where you rough up your son, but you talk nice to your daughter. What's the difference you find is the biggest difference with raising a boy with raising a girl? Yeah, facts. You have to grow your man, you have to grow your, your son to be a man. You understand? You have to grow him because the world out there Remember, you know, it's hard for men out there as well, you know. They go through a lot, you know, so you have, to, you have to really grow them to a certain way. Don't get me wrong, I soft with my son uh, sometimes, and I connect with him emotionally as well. Me as a, me as a father, we still tell my son, say, yo, I love you, because they need to hear that. Make them know so that's normal to hear. Yeah, they don't hear it enough, because they feel like, they feel like men feel like we don't need to be emotional. We do need to be emotional because we have it. Because when we're not around with our women and stuff like that, we go through shit and try to keep it inside by ourselves to try to be tough in front of people. But you have to let people know, and, and I make my son know that. My daughter, I'm not saying myself with her, I'm very firm with my daughter as well. But at times, I'm trying to show my daughter, like, you need to know how a man is supposed to treat you in life. 
So I, my, my daughter, like me tell my wife already now, me, me I take my daughter upon her first date. And me I go sure this is how you're supposed to be treated on a date. Do you understand what I mean? Because I'm not, I, I would never circle for a man disrespecting my daughter in any capacity. So yeah, man, so. You get it. You brought up your father earlier. I call him Don Bob. Yeah. All right? He passed about two years ago. Long time. Long time. Eight years. Eight years. I had, I mean, eight, nine. When we just started the comedy thing. Mm -hmm. So. What would you say is one lesson that your father taught you that you take with you to this day and so either you instill it in your comedy, in your regular life, with your children, something that your father either showed you or said to you that you'll never forget and you take it to this day? My father teach me a lot of things. I'm not going to lie. My father teach me a lot of things. And he teach me to learn to do things yourself. That's the one thing I'm always, from even when I'm little. Yo, real story. Remember one time, I mean, no, I'm not gonna say, mm, your father did bad, but no. He did bad, but he, yeah, he did bad. I can't even address it up. <laughs> me remember, you know, like, I me come, me come home one day, and my father run in the backyard, and he's sitting down there with his friend, and they have a big scandal bag. Scandal bag is a plastic bag, for those who don't know. On the table, one of them have a garden table, and it's full of weed. Be a weed night. And I sit down there, I look upon it the whole time. I'm dead there and them attack and them smoke them weed and, and my father said, Where you look on the weed so far? I said, I want, I want a spliff. He said, You turn man. He said, What do you mean? You smoke, I want to smoke too. You know what my father said? If you can't build it, smoke it. Yo, I <laughs> use about 10 Rizla for build. <laughs> when you look on the spliff, it bend up to it. <laughs> father said, You have waste weed, boy. Move from yourself. So, you know, my father just teach me like things, little things like that, like before, like if you can't try to do things by yourself first, before you ask the people. Like even when I like, when, when, when hustle, my father encouraged me, get a job. I said, why? But I make money from hustling. He said, get a job. I said, why? He said, listen, when I was your age and I was working, I was hustling. Do you know what? I used to get paid in a little brown envelope. I used to collect my envelope push in on my top pocket and walk off a site. He said, every man will work on the site. As soon as they get them envelope, they open it and I count their money. Them look on him and say, why are you not count your money? Don't need to. Because it's just, he's already doing something, but he's just showing that you don't need to make everybody know your business. You know what I mean? You can be independent. You can do more. If you have time in the day, some people will hustle. Like, this is hustling me at all. Some hustlers will hustle. But they, they know they have another 10 hours in a day and they won't make use of that day. And say, you know what, try to change your life by trying to do something different. In a way, my father was telling me, he didn't really want me to hustle, get a job. Because he wanted your sister, you can make money without doing what he's doing. But just treat me kind of bad, he never know how to say it direct like that. Because <laughs> me and him fear for him. Me and him, me and him fear for enough, man. Big up Dan Bob, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know even... This year, or was it last year you got married? This year. And I seen he, it was in Santorini, Greece? Yep. Very amazing. What made you decide at this stage in your career, in your life, that it's time to really get married now? I, I, went, I said decide, you know, because listen, man, me and my wife don't have the marriage already, you know. The marriage is not the day, you know. The marriage is what you do. Mm -hmm. It's the time you spend together. Like, there's no, there shouldn't be no time li limit on when you're getting married. I know, and, and, and if you're Christian and, and you believe, or you're religious and you believe in certain things, that's cool. I don't, show, I don't disrespect anybody believes or anything like that. But of a personal experience for me, it's like we've been together 17 years before we got married. Okay. Some people get married after a year, two years, and then divorce. Because they've never actually been through everything together. Mm -hmm. We've been through everything right now. So we, we know this is it. There's no turning back now. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? And that's what I'm saying. So there shouldn't be no time on it. We, we were supposed to get married a couple of years ago. Things happen. Things change. You know what I mean? Careers and this and that. COVID did hit. So things just extended further. But it happened and the time was right. And it was a beautiful day, man. Mm. What's one thing you admire the most about your wife? Honestly, she's a nice person. Mm -hmm. Very nice person. 
very caring person. You understand? Like when we think even like things where she sacrificed for my career, it's like, yo, I appreciate that. Like right now she's there home with the two kids. She at work and she still do the school run. She still run the house. She have to do all of that while I am here. Uh, like I'm working, but it's different. When you're there back in England, you can go do your show. Next day you go home, you're there for help out. Do you understand what I mean? But she did there do it and but it, she's doing it for the sake because she knows this is for our children. So it's not personal. It's for the children. And as I said, she's the nicest person, man. Like sometimes Mr. Sati, you're too nice. You're too, yo, like we will go to a birthday party. Any of our friends' birthday party. And she buy a gift. Other people just turn up. It's a party. Where you bring gift to a party? May I tell her why? Stop buying things, the people. She's like, I don't buy it to receive. I say, okay. It's cool. So she's like so nice, man. Always helping people. Always. And, you know, like she's a midwife. Yeah. So she's always bringing life into the world. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah man. Good. All right. So then this is the reason why I ask this question is because I spoke to your wife earlier today. All right. And I asked her some questions. This segment, this is the last segment here, is called, How Good Do You Know Your Wife? All right? I asked her 10 questions. I know the answer. 10? 10. I chat to my woman so long, bro. I'm here. I'm call her now. Oh, she asleep. 10. All right? All right? So I hope you Pressure. guys are going to keep score out here. How good? Why Yadi knows his wife. All right. All right? You yes. ready? Yeah, man. All right. What's her favorite color? Turquoise. You're right. All right, good one. Curry goat or oxtail? No, she's an oxtail girl. No, uh, curry, sorry, curry goat, sorry. Curry goat, sorry. Uh, no, it's curry goat. I don't say I have curry goat. No, I was meant to say no. She's a, can you say oxtail last, last, right? You said curry goat or oxtail. I was meant yeah. to say no, she's a curry goat. It's a curry goat. All right. Okay. I'm an oxtail guy. She's a curry girl. Got you. She never born in Jamaica, so you have to see. All right. First place you guys went on an, uh, your first official date. Ooh. First place we go on your official date. This one tricky. May I tell you why it's tricky? Because official date. Mm -hmm. Official. Like there's a few we could say, I don't know what she class as official because I might say the Chinese boat, we go up and have Chinese, but then I might say it was a cinema we go to. And at the cinema, you know the machine them, where you can collect the teddy bear them? She looked upon me, I'm putting my money on her, I said, I go play it. She's like, oh, no one ever wins these. She turn her back and I go say, eh, 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 tsh, collect one. Up to now, she still have the teddy bear. She told me that exact same story. That story she told me. Tree that right. tree. All right, tree, good. Tree. Is she a saver or a spender? Spender, definitely a spender. Okay, four for four. Definitely. I got you. Spender. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> She's an Amazonian. <laughs> okay. Trust me, I know. Yo, Trust right, me, right I now, know. Me know, yo, you know when delivery comes so much, you know it delivery people. Eh? <laughs> what going on? You are getting bread out? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm here. <laughs> Okay, one thing. But hold on. Okay. She's, she's a spender, but not like outrageous where she just spends lavish, spends on what is needed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a difference. Let me just put that out there. Okay. Yeah. One thing that gets her really upset lies. Mm -hmm. Lies. She hears lies. Any lie. Little lie, big lie. Hear lie. So, yeah. You're right. Right now, you're. you're Five for five, you know that, right? No, six for six. I feel like a six for <laughs> All right, this is a six. Or is she a fighter or a lover? Fighter. <laughs> I should tell you a different a lie. She a tell. <laughs> she is a fighter. Eh, not according to her, but eh, you've been doing good so far. I think we'll have to give you a pass on that one. All right. No, she's a fighter. Just all right. Yeah. Would she prefer? $100,000 cash or perfect credit score? Ooh. That's a tricky question because me and I have never had that conversation. So, mm -hmm. credit score, definitely. Uh, really? Uh, Shit. Okay. 
I thought she would want a credit score. No. Take the cash. Really? Yeah. In a flash. Take it. All right. That's Next one I have here. What's her favorite alcoholic beverage? No, I, I shouldn't know this because she changed them. They're my trick question, you give her, you know. Because, she answered them. Because favorite, what is a favorite? Alcoholic beverage. I wanna, no, you say I should supposed to know this, but you see my woman, me can tell you different multiple times where she, she choose different, different drink. Cause she's a woman who drink brandy and Red Bull with me. She's a woman who drink white rum with me. She's a woman who love Deserano. I don't know if you know Deserano. She loves Deserano, which is a little, but she also like rum cream, like Bailey's and, and them thing there as well. So, I could go with Bailey's, yeah, man, or rum cream type of style. So, I don't know. I'm probably wrong, but I don't. Which one she said? Go on, tell me. She said anything fruity, or sometimes she will drink what you're drinking. <laughs> so, i right. If she said, you said any, it? hold on. Okay. I said right. anything I drink, but okay. also. She likes, so she, she, she don't have a specific type. Yeah, all right. She love, she, she love pina colada. Yeah. She love that. Me hate it. <laughs> Got two more here. What's, for her, what would be the perfect date night? Perfect date night? Mm -hmm. See again, yo, you ask her some questions were tricky because she don't mind going on a long fucking drive Put on some music and we just well turn on the music and just talk. She love that shit. She she love she love a drive and talk. But at the same time, she don't even mind a quiet night in, yeah, with just some food and watching something. So yeah, quiet night in. You're correct. Yeah. You are correct, sir. Last one I have for you here. Oh gosh. Dream vacation destination. See another tricky one again. <laughs> Can you know much place we talk about? See, I want to say the Maldives. But I also want to say Hawaii. You are correct. Hawaii. So clearly, would we say he knows his wife? We'd say that, right? I do. I do. Yeah. No, that was that but was. But knew I should have taken the credit score over the hundred grand. <laughs> I'm going to call out to and say, you really want to fuck up your credit <laughs> for a hundred grand. Mm. But then I get a hundred thousand pounds different to a hundred thousand Canadian. So. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, when you have the money, you don't know if you're going to live for it tomorrow. So you might as well take the cash and spend. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, true. Me and she talk about that. You're right. I get that one wrong by accident. But I saw you go hush. Yeah. Hush, hush. I get about good. eight. I get eight out of ten. So that's yeah, cool. Eight and a half, I would say that. All right, see you there. All right. So that's the end of this conversation part. Now this is where we turn it over to you guys. Now, if there's anybody in the crowd that wants to ask White Yard a question, we have about five minutes or so. You could. Where is Wes with the microphone? Wes with the microphone. Yes, sir, yes, yes, we have about three and a half minutes. Yes. Okay. Hold your microphone loud and I'm through it. <laughs> He's my, the voice of God. Chup, 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 chup. He's the voice, voice of God. My voice is just louder. No, man. It, 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 All God. right. So then right here, there is somebody standing up right so here. So first question. First question. Yes, sir. All right. You're from Jamaica, obviously. The most beautiful part of Jamaica. Where is that? For me, or uh, for, uh, uh, no, 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 no. For me, for you, for you, for you. No more Saint Elizabeth. Saint oh, Elizabeth. Uh, other than Saint Elizabeth. No nah, man, Saint Elizabeth have some nice place, man. Yo, we used to have a beach. We have. Uh, it's it's kind of in between White House. Well, not White House. In between Westmoreland and 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 Saint Elizabeth. Yeah, we have. A, we used to have a beach called um, Front Hill. Yeah. But them lock it down now because the crocodile them. Uh, but you still have Bluefields Beach. Anybody know Bluefields Beach? Yeah. Bluefields Beach is nice, small, not too big, beautiful white sand. It's so nice. So there, no, man. no Portland? I, I, to be honest, I don't think I've ever been around Portland oh, that okay. much for oh, knowing. Oh, okay. But if it's nice for you, it's nice for you. No, 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 no. I, I asked you. I'm just exactly. Asking. Saint Elizabeth, nice for me. <laughs> I love Saint Elizabeth. We have an alligator pond. With no alligator, just the pond. So we have time for what? About two more questions here, Wes? About two more, two more. Here's this person in the I orange. I over there, Soto. So mm -hmm. do it's cracking. Yeah. 
What's cracking? Just two quick questions, all right? All right. First one. Story about the gold teeth if you never told it before. I asked because my dad had a gold teeth, so I want to know the story behind the gold teeth. <laughs> and the second question, um, what made you start dissing the food on the, online? Because you're killing it. All right. You're killing the food online. Trust me, the cooking. But you pick up to yourself. So the, so the gold teeth, yeah? The gold teeth, basically, when we go to England, right? It was a bit of a trend. <laughs> It's a bit of a trend with the gold teeth. Them are two me have. Like everybody I get them around that time. And me did want as well. Me never want to feel left out. So I got them done. And then recently, funny enough, I've I got my teeth. Um, not like veneers. I had the Invisalign thing done. Went to a dentist and everything. And he said to me, do you want to take them off and put back, not like have normal? And I said to my wife, say, what do you think? She said, no, leave it because it's part of your character. So yeah, so it separates me from, you know what I mean, makes me be who I am as well, so I keep it. The food situation now, let me tell you the honest truth with the food situation, yeah? I never plan to ever do a food videos like that. I never plan to do it. I just stick to doing comedy skits, ranting videos. I used to roast different type of pictures with people and different things. What happened is, I realized that people around the world love to take the piss out of Caribbean culture. Especially, and I have a platform, and I have a voice, and I'm going to pull them up and correct them when they're wrong. And that's right. So, because listen, with them on social media, YouTube, you know how many people cook proper Jamaican food on YouTube and give them tutorial of step by step? All right, the measurements for the season might vary because we don't really use measurement. We just say, a teaspoon of this. But you can follow it to get it right. All of a sudden, you come up and decide, I'm going to make rice and peas. And you'll get garden green peas. Yeah, I eat that, man. <laughs> All right, last, have, last one, one here, Wes. Another we one got, over there. Yeah, before we go to this one, we have one from YouTube, from the art chemist who's been commenting like crazy all night. Big up yourself. If you could do your comedy special in three different locations, what's your top three locations where you would mm. film a comedy special? I'm not going to make my people fall around the world now. Because this actually depends on YouTube. I'm going to stay for YouTube. Mm -hmm. All right. Honestly, Toronto is first on the list. Of course. And I'll tell you why. Because you've always showed me love in Toronto. Always. And not only that, I love Toronto so much because the multicultural embracement here is, is, is crazy. Like people embrace each other. <laughs> Man say, can't smoke weed here. <laughs> no, but it's just that nobody don't really disrespect anybody in a certain way. It's like everybody just get together and be one. We embrace, you guys embrace everybody's culture as if it's your own. You're not ignorant to it. So it makes you feel welcome. So Toronto, definitely. In the UK, um, Birmingham, there's a, there's a place called Birmingham. They are very, very nice there, man. Um, I mean, no London people are upset with me if I don't say London. So it's mad, because I feel like London has to be in there, but then there's parts of the Caribbean that I performed that even recently, like the Cayman Islands. It was beautiful, the reception was nice, the audience was great. Bermuda, great audience. So it's hard to choose, but if I can really be honest, Toronto, Birmingham, I forgot to put London in there, man. London, yeah, London. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Last question before a very, very quick two and a half minute intermission. Jesus. Thank you for the mic. Good uh, night, first good things night. First, I want to say happy J to my best friend, uh, Victoria. Happy J Day. Happy what, dear? G Day, birthday. Oh, G Day, okay. Happy birthday. I thought it was graduation, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a two-part question. All right. Um, with comedy in 2022, what is too far of a joke? And like, where do you draw the line? Because like, AKA Will Smith, I'm not gonna go up there and smack you, but yeah. like, what's too far of a joke? And um, my second part is, who is your top five comedians? All right. For me, with comedy nowadays, yes, comedy is becoming very, sensitive nowadays. It's becoming very, very sensitive where we have to be careful how we speak or what we say. And I get it, but we're living in a, but it shouldn't be like that because we should be able to speak 
openly and free and talk our mind about things. Long as it's not in a disrespectful way, a racist way, a hate way, it should be fine. I should be able to make a joke about any single person, long as it's not putting them down or disgrace, like, you know what I mean? Like making them feel like they're nobodies, degrading them. Long as you're not doing that, it should be fine. However, this industry we're in right now with cancer culture, it's so easy for people to cancel. You understand what I mean? So it's easier for me to stay away from that type of material and stick to my family and me. So let me tell jokes about my situations, me, myself, and I. I cannot then offend anybody apart from myself. So, and top five comedians, um, no, in no order, okay, if, we, if we start going to the order, it's too long. So in, in no order, top five comedians, Bernie Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Um, big up Oliver, you know what? <laughs> I'm a big up Oliver, but I don't put in on my top five. You know why? Because I've never seen Oliver do stand-up. Yeah. So in terms of stand-up, it, it, like Bernie Mac, um, Cat Williams, right? Um, this person may have put in on my top top five, and even what you say about sensitive content and stuff like that, he's in top five. Eddie Murphy, yeah, like trust me, Eddie Murphy up there. Um, Martin Lawrence, and the last but not least, and I, I'll tell you why I put this person in my top five. It's the first time, it's the first time I went to watch a live comedy show, but not only that, this person is not even so much stand-up, it's the work that they put into their craft to show you that comedy can go to a next level. I'm sorry, I'm going to upset someone, no? Kevin Hart. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to tell you why there's no Dave Chappelle, and I'm going to tell you why there's no, um, no prior, there's no prior. I'm going to tell you why those two are not in it. For me, this is why they're not in it. Richard Pryor and Dave Chappelle, if you, ask, if you ask every comedian, they automatically put those two in. Automatically. But more time is out of respect, more than just because of comedy. Because to me, even Tracy Morgan's funny. Hilarious. Hilarious. Acting and stand-up, hilarious. Do you understand? Chris Rock is funny. Do you understand what I mean? So, so there's so many comedians that I find funny, but, 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 do you, no, it's true, it's all about female, but then again, it's, it's down to personal preference, what you like, what you find funny, you understand what I mean? Because they, I'll tell you something about comedy, you sparked a, a, something I'm going to speak about. You see, with comedy, yeah, we're not even with comedy, with entertainment, and this is facts, it's a very male-dominated industry, right? Females are not many in comedy, right? They are some. I like Tiffany Haddish. I've never seen her perform live. I've never seen her perform live. In terms of acting, I think she's funny. You know who else I like? The, um, the white lady from... Um, no, the, the bridesmaid lady. What's her name? Top actor. She does Identity Thief as well. Um, Meles, that's it. Hilarious, but I've never seen them do stand up. So, because I've, I don't want to put the. If I see them do stand up now, I can then judge them on where they go. I've seen Dave Chappelle three times. And I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't. It's for me, it's not for me. It's just not for me. It's not because I find what he does. It, 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 I went to a two private shows where it's small like this, a special show. And it just, it just didn't connect for me in certain ways. And whether the, the comedy is too intellig um, intelligent for me because I'm dyslexic, I don't know. <laughs> but I respect what he does, and I respect that he's one of the only comics that still stand up on stage and will say what he wants to say and don't give a fuck. So I respect that. I just don't have his money to do that yet. Yard man. Excellent, great conversation. I hope you guys get a real better understanding of who this man is. Where you'll see him on Instagram, you'll see you'll see him live. You see all this good stuff, but you don't really get to see what built this character. And hopefully tonight, you guys could walk away with a better understanding of Mr. White Yadi. So give him a round of applause. Yeah, yeah.
And so we listen, like to... people, it is a special show. This was special. You don't get this at the other shows. Sit down and talk. Also, I will be coming back out. I'm going to kind of be hosting the next half where I'll be doing jokes and introducing comedians in between. I might do some new stuff, but many of you didn't even see the tour, so I'm going to do some of the tour stuff and mix it in, right? Yeah, so they're going right. to have, have a, a five-minute break just for you to tile it and come back. So we'd like to thank our sponsors, 1800 uh, Tequila and Kraken Rum. We'll be doing yeah. a five-minute five minute break. So, two, so, 2.5 so, minutes. So, so, so for Jamaican people, that's one minute. One minute. Yeah. <laughs> you can check me out on Instagram at Two Line Music Hut or on YouTube Entertainment Report Podcast. We're on everything social media, we're right across the board. Thank you guys and have a good night. Have a five minute intermission. Then we're going to come back to the actual comedy show. Big up, big up. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.